afternoon. Um, I'm Courtney Flannery. I'm from Betsy Lane High School. Um, I teach our AP science course, and that's actually the entire focus of the grant that I designed this year because I focused like my efforts on changing my DNA unit to mix it up from a regular biology course. Um, when I was designing this unit, a couple of things actually came up as far as when I was designing my plan. Um, as I go through my PowerPoint, I'm going to focus on about six major themes that I went through as I was carrying out the project. Um, the first thing that we'll talk about will be my purpose for investigation, like why I actually decided this was the unit that I wanted to put the emphasis on with a new group of students, um, why I specifically chose genetics as the topic, um, a plan of action that I had to implement as a teacher before I could actually design some STEM activities for my students, and then what conclusions and then what implications I saw as we went throughout the year and actually carried out this wonderful process with these kids. Um, and the problem that I was most concerned with, um, I don't know if any of you teach an AP class right now, but they're kind of in the midst of all of these redesigns in almost every course that they have. And a couple of years ago, College Board did their revision for biology courses, and the AP biology course changed dramatically. Um, it went from being a course where it was just vocab-based and concept-based, and it actually turned into something where it was more about application and kids interpreting data, and they actually had to apply concepts in a manner that they never had before. So it was kind of taking that role of repetition out of the class, and it was kind of turning it into something that was more investigative. Um, with that being said, one of the things that we focus on in general biology the year before is a lot of just general genetics, Mendelian genetics, Punnett squares, looking at calculations of populations, predicting things, and stuff like that. So with the AP course, I decided that since they still have to have a genetics unit, and it incorporates things more like biotechnology, um, more bioethical issues, I decided that I wanted to tweak it a little bit, and I actually wanted to make it a focus area where they had to do some research on their own. And this is where it all began. <laughs> Um, last summer when the grants were on the table and I was kind of debating what I wanted to do, I was actually scanning through Amazon, just checking out some biology books for my AP course, and I ran across one called Abraham Lincoln's DNA. And I thought, mm, okay, it at least sounds interesting. It's not going to be something that eh, they're going to be bored with. It's not a traditional textbook. But what this book was, was it's about different like bioethical issues that we deal with in genetics, anything from forensic science to how we use DNA in court systems, um, GMOs and how we're modifying foods. It kind of just ran the entire gamut of anything that the kids could be interested in genetically. And from that, that became the first part of my grant. I wanted to use the grant to buy a classroom set of the Abraham Lincoln's DNA books. After I actually looked at the way the book was situated and the way it was organized, it actually ended up falling into six major themes that I'll talk about in just a second. But then I turned toward, okay, well, what activities am I going to put with this? And instead of just doing it as a classroom project where all 30 kids are doing the same thing, I decided, okay, well, the book's divided into six themes. Let's break it up so my kids can kind of co-teach each other and we can address more content. So I turned to Carolina Biology, and I looked for a corresponding lab kit for each one of the major themes in the book. Um, and then the last thing that I did, I wanted my kids to have a public speaking event for this, so they were at least communicating what they had found out with each other and the community. So I used what was left of my money to purchase trifold display boards so they could actually put their content together. Um, my, timeline, my timeline was actually fairly accurate. I kind of planned it this way on purpose because I knew my genetics unit came after winter break, after the snow. So when I was planning it for that beginning of March, mid-March session. It actually worked out pretty good because I had time to get all the grant supplies in. Um, and if you look up here, it ran from March 21st, and they actually didn't present until the beginning of April. And we stuck fairly well to that timeline this year, so I was very pleased with that. Um, how they were evaluated on their learning, um, we kind of split it up into a couple different sections. The first thing that they did have to do was work as a group to divide the readings. Within each one of the sections, there were like four or five major stories or themes, I guess you would call it. And the groups had to decide, okay, which people were going to read which stories, which ones interested them the most. So they had a reading component where they had to do an analysis. They were also graded on laboratory design. 
when I got the lab kits, I took the teacher's manuals away from them, I gave them the kits, and I said, you've got to research. So instead of giving them that whole idea of a cookbook lab, I said, you've got these materials to work with, this has been the emphasis in the book, what can you do with it? And I gave them three days in class to do design before they even actually had to start doing the actual lab work. And then the last part was community impact. How could they tie all of their reading literature and all of the stuff from their experiment together to actually give something purposeful to the community and their peers? And these were the six major topics in the book. Um, DNA and history. This one kind of took an approach of looking at like the royal families and talking about how um, Abraham Lincoln, they suspected him of having Marfan syndrome. It kind of pulled stories from that. DNA and the court systems, like arguments of Klinefelter syndrome making people more aggressive, and was that true? So it was an analysis of that sort of thing. Um, DNA and human behavior, um, genetic engineering, DNA and diseases in medicine, and then genetic technologies, like new innovations that we've seen in the last five to 10 years. Um, and then I'm gonna kind of skim through these really quick. These are the actual groups and what they focused on. The first one, the DNA and history, you can kind of see the text there. Abraham Lincoln and the Marfan syndrome, genetic diseases and royal families. And I think that was the one that actually focused on hemophilia. And one of the little boys in this group, he actually is hardcore history nerd. Like, I'm not sure how I ended up with him in an AP science class because he's history, history, history. He loved this project because it pulled that in for him. And I hadn't even thought about that when I began. Um, and then this group, their specific test, to actually look at how you would use DNA in a study of a particular group, they did a genetics of taste test, and they tested over 100 kids in the school to see what specific genes and this and that that certain peers had. So it gave them a correlation there. Um, DNA in medicine, we looked at cystic fibrosis, breast cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and gene therapy. And with these groups, I bought a DNA electrophoresis kit from Carolina already had the e-gel machines, I just had to buy the DNA samples, and these kids got to run an electrophoresis gel to look at two parents and then predict if their kid carried a gene for a specific thing, maybe like breast cancer. Um, DNA and behavior patterns, now this one was a little weird, okay? When we started out, the text for this book focused more on mental things, more social impacts, because it looked like mental illness, personality, um, talents, like it focused on artistic and musical ability, was that nature versus nurture, it looked at gay genes. But then the lab, because those were more psychology based, we had to kind of tweak the lab a little bit and talk, okay, well because we're looking at behavior patterns, well let's look at something else that could in like indicate like a behavior pattern in growth. So what this group focused on and kind of taking an alternate manner, they looked at growth patterns and behavior patterns in yeast when they were exposed to UV light versus just a typical sunlight. Um, I had a group that did genetic engineering on their own. Um, by far, bless their hearts, they got the hardest lab there was, but they went straight for it. Um, this section focused on things like genetically modifying organisms, transgenic animals, um, and they actually did what's called a transformation lab. They did a, a pea blue colony lab where they grew E. coli and they introduced like a blue glowing plasmid into the bacteria to actually see what that did to the organism. And then DNA in the courts, this group looking like felon data banks, things like that, they also ran electrophoresis just to try to catch the criminal. So that one kind of was the similar. Um, I had a group that did some cloning. They cloned carrot, seed, or carrot seeds. Right now we're still at stem growth because it does take a progress period of time, but they actually got to see the process of germination, so that was pretty cool for them. And then that's the groups with their different presentation boards. And then conclusions and outcomes. I was so surprised with the simple fact that they were so interested in the bioethical issues that they almost kind of pushed the lab aside at first. Like, they didn't care that I was saying, hey, you've got to figure out the lab. They were intrigued by, well, how does this tie in? How can we pull this and that in? So I think they actually got a lot from it. Um, they were successful in the lab design. I did have to help a little bit more on some labs than others. Like I said, some of them were longer. Some of them were a little bit more in-depth than what they were used to. But if they were on the right page, I didn't care a bit to step in and help modify. 
and then future changes. The only thing that I would really look at is I may want to make it more hypothetical in the future. Like, I kind of just present it to them as, you know, there's these six different scenarios that we're going to look at. And I'm thinking if I do something like this again with the book and these same units, I would rather pose it to them as, you have this social problem. After looking at the text and the lab, what would you do to combat that problem or what proposal would you put on the table? And that's it. Any questions? Um, honestly, going into it, I kind of talked to them about the fact that there were some touchy subjects in the book, and instead of just me assigning sections to particular groups, I kind of let them get w within groups of peers that they were comfortable with, and then I let them choose which of the sections. And if I had groups that picked the same one, I let them talk it out. And with my AP kids, usually they're pretty good about communicating like that. I don't think I would try something of this degree of controversial topic with my full biology classes yet, but once they're at that AP level, because ours is dual credit and it's college level, they know they're going to have that kind of context, so I think it was just an expectation that they kind of knew was ahead of them, so. Anything else? Thank you.